Winter is coming and there are some settings that you should change in your Tesla to make life a little bit easier in the winter. First off, tire pressure. I set mine to uh, three bars cold pressure just uh, before I filmed this. And just keep in mind that, I mean, you're striving for 2.9 or that's the recommended from Tesla. Today it's uh, 8 degrees Celsius, so it's a bit warmer than the forecast says it will be this week. So we'll probably go down to 2.9 uh, bars of cold pressure. And keep in mind that if you park in a garage like I do, the garage is probably 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, which means that the tire pressure when it's parked in the garage or as soon as I drive out of it is a bit higher than it should be. So what I did is that I drove it out of the garage, drove to a gas station, just sat in the car for 5-10 minutes to let the tires cool down uh, and then I filled it up to my desired tire pressure. Just keep that in mind if you have your car parked in a warm garage. Getting into the settings. The first thing I would change on the control page is the uh, mirror autofold. Uh, depends on your mileage of course and your preference but if you get a lot of ice and stuff stuck in the mirrors and the motors in the mirrors have to fight ice and all of that stuff uh, then it's kind of nice to have it turned off it's just a headache i'm trying to avoid on top of that nothing more on the controls page as far as dynamics goes um, a lot of people choose to have the car in chill acceleration i keep it in standard all year round because i'm so used to driving with it and when i drive it on chill it just feels uh, sluggish i'm just more careful on the pedal in the winter where if i know that it's slippery good thing to know as well is that you have the slip start option here that's if you get stuck in snow or something uh, the vehicle will do its best to help you to get unstuck charging is also a somewhat interesting topic i typically keep mine between 50 and 70 percent for everyday use in the summer depending on what i'm doing and if i'm going on a trip i just charge it to 100 percent overnight so it's ready and charged up when i'm about to leave but in the winter i move that up about 10 percent so i charge it maybe 60 to 80 percent instead just to counteract the increased consumption that comes with colder temperatures wet or snowy surfaces uh, and all the things that happen in winter that affect uh, consumption and air density oh you know as far as autopilot there is only one thing i would change and that is the set speed setting i always have it on current speed and what that means is that if you activate you pull the stock and you activate adaptive cruise control or autopilot it sets it at the speed you're currently driving at and i think the first time i changed this was some winter when i had it set to the speed limit which means that if i'm driving on uh, 110 kilometers per hour road and i'm driving 90 and i activate the cruise control or the autopilot the car will, like, will accelerate itself and sometimes i would experience that the car accelerated so aggressively that it felt like i was about to lose control so i keep it on current speed all year round but for winter i think that's the preferred option to have more control over your acceleration and the torque you're putting down nothing else on autopilot nothing on locks for lights it's always nice to have headlights after exit it gets dark in the winter and i'm gonna try this out when the snow comes but i imagine i foresee that i will turn off auto turn signals if i recall this didn't work very well last winter and that makes sense because it's snow and ice on the road so the car can't really see the uh, the markings on the road surface so that's something that that i did personal preference though and uh, display nothing i mean i think using distance uh, as energy display is pretty a pretty poor representation regardless if it says kilometers instead of percent but i think it becomes even worse in winter when you have higher consumption so the distance displayed is even more off than it is in summer i believe if it's not correct me in the comments but i think percentage is the way to go it's a good way to know the car but personal preference of course oh since we're in here let's see psi okay so i have it set to 42 43 psi or 3.0 bar service this is where it gets really really interesting the biggest thing in here is to go under the wheel and tire setting you probably have different rims for your winter uh, wheels perhaps so you can just change it in here if you have third party rims like i do i just use whatever is the most similar and uh, similar in the aerodynamic sense so i imagine these would be equally aerodynamically bad as the third party rims that i have on my car but the most important thing is this where you go on the tires and then you can change the tire season you have either all season or summer or you have winter tires and a friend of mine sophie and 
her boyfriend Christopher. They bought a Tesla last winter, I think. And they had driver profiles. And whenever he was driving, he experienced the car to be stable and not jerky and losing grip and doing weird stuff. Whereas when she was driving, she felt like uh, it put down too much torque and she would get small rotations uh, in the body. So she called me and we went through the settings. And it turns out that her profile was set to all season or summer, while his profile was set to winter because he was the one who took the car to change the, change the wheels and everything. And it seems like, I haven't looked into this myself, I haven't even googled it actually, but that this setting changes the driving characteristics of the car. So a very, very important setting to do. Uh, and it also resets some sort of algorithmic magic that's happening behind the scenes just to know what types of tires it's driving on and whatever. Really important setting and make sure you check it. If you have multiple profiles, check it on every profile, make sure it's set to winter. Other than that, here in the service menu, this is just a personal preference thing, but if you hit wiper service mode, I'm not gonna do that because I put the coating on the glass just a day ago, so I don't wanna have the wipers moving around. But it puts the wipers up uh, a little bit, and this is preference as well, but for me, when I'm parking outside and it's uh, snowing or I expect that I might get ice on the windshield, I prefer to put them in the service mode because when I come back to the car and I wanna scrape it off, uh, well, of course I'm preheating, but if I need to scrape it off as well, I can scrape it off all the way down to where the wipers kind of live uh, when they're not in use. Uh, and it's easier to lift them and get underneath to get a clean windshield so you don't get a bunch of that odd buildup, you know, on the rubber itself. That can be really annoying when you get streaks across the entire windshield. And I think that's it. So a lot of these settings come down to personal preference, or some of them, but you really should change at least the tires to winter, and then the other ones, you know, you do you. Whatever suits your driving style, or your climate, or your preference, use that, I don't care. But changing the tire setting to winter is really important.